Well, greetings NASCAR enjoyers, and today begins a monumentous occasion. Yeah, so last time, I've just upgraded from a CRT TV to a flat screen TV, and Eric Amarola gets his second win. But, it's nowhere near as crazy as what happened today. Embrace yourselves. There's a reason why this die cast is on my Mac. All right. So Kansas, you know stuff is going to get crazy when it comes down in Kansas. My last race review on Kansas had a lot of mistakes and a lot of misinformation. I apologize for the misinformation. I forgot who won the race and. That video was not one of my best takes, and we all make mistakes. I promise not to do that again, as the Cup Series Kansas race was crazy. In the first stage, we would see a caution on lap number one. Are you serious? Another first lap caution. And if that's not bad enough, well, at least for Kyle Larson fans, Kyle Larson gets involved in an incident. Ironic considering that he dominated Bristol last week, but then he gets flung into an incident at Kansas. And it's also ironic considering that he won the race, the last race at Kansas. But anyways, William Byron would end up winning the first stage. And of course, we got to see who won the contest of paint schemes by Ally, and it's actually a pretty cool looking one. I saw a cobbled together mess. It's a Skywarp-ish car. So yeah. Yeah, it's black and purple. I mean, the color of the Skywarp, you can't go wrong. Might buy, buy, might buy a die cast of that car sometime. But anyways, William Byron wins the first stage, and then the second stage, we would get Caution after caution after caution. We would get like a few more cautions. But there's one caution that I wanted to bring up. Two of them, in fact. There's one where Justin Haley and John Hunter Nemechek are involved. Seriously, that guy just can never catch a break in the Cup Series. He's won in the Xfinity Series, but he can never win in the Cup level. Oh, and Eric Jones also got involved in the caution. Seriously, get that car off the track, man. Yeah. And, of course, Austin Sindrick also got involved in one of the cautions. He had an issue with his car. Yeah, one of the Penske cars was down and out. But, the final stage is where stuff gets crazy. And, of course, the second stage, Alex Bowman wins with the Skywarp machine. Yes, I call it Skywarp. It looks like a few Adams designed the car itself because he likes black and purple. But anyways, the final stage had a battle between Kyle Busch and Ross Chastain. Kyle Busch is looking for his first win in 20 seasons. Well, he's looking to take away that 50 race winless streak, now 51. But he gets involved with Chase Briscoe, who obviously decides he's had enough of being lapped and decides to shut the door on him. But anyways, come the final stage and of course we would get a few more cautions and on one of the restarts it seemed like Martin Trix Jr would have won his, well, his final race of the Cup Series since he's retiring full-time next year. Yeah, so he wants to make this a swan song, but then, uh, after another caution, guess who got ahead of him? And you're never going to guess. 
Ross Chastain! Ross Chastain went past him, and that's not the best part. He also fought, Ross Chastain also found himself in a battle with William Byron, and it was intense. It was actually an intense battle. It was David versus Goliath. Yeah, you remember the David versus Goliath storyline, right? But anyway, so I don't care if there was cautions, because the real highlight was getting to see Ross Chastain battle William Byron, and William Byron probably helped him a bit, since he probably wanted to apologize to Ross Chastain for that incident in Texas. I mean, who doesn't? So yeah, William Byron and Ross Chastain was in a battle. It was David versus Goliath. And of course, just like in the Bible story, David would end up winning because Ross Chastain won! He won! It's his first win of 2024! And I don't believe it! He actually won! So yeah, an amazing race. And this is why the Kansas race is getting the first ever in the Cup Series of 2024, a 10 out of 10, and while there might be some flaws, yes, there are definitely some flaws with the race. I mean, there's cautions. But, it was still a crazy race. And it proved that the next-gen car could bring a good racing product. So yeah, it was... A perfect race with flaws. Yeah, a near perfect race with flaws, and of course, there might be some flaws, but the good outweighs the bad. So yeah, a perfect 20 years of having another one of my favorite drivers win. Yeah, so Dale Jr. won his first race of the Daytona 500 in 2004 and then 20 years later another one of my favorite drivers Ross Chastain won at Kansas and was a playoff spoiler so yeah an easy 10 out of 10 race there might be flaws it's not nearly as perfect as olden days of NASCAR but what it has going for it outweighs the bad because we got to see Ross Chastain finally win. And that's why his car is being displayed because Ross Chastain won. And what a way to celebrate. He held off William Byron for the win. Yeah, he could have spun out for the in the final lap and the race would have been a 6 or 7 out of 10. If he went into a tangle with William Byron and William Byron took away his win like in Texas, but it's a 10 out of 10 and Ross Chastain actually did a good job in fending off William Byron and he had showed a lot of tenacity and amazing skill. So yeah, the Melon Man finally won his first race of the year. Bravo, man. He got robbed with victories in so many ways. First the Daytona 500, then the Texas race, then, wait, that's not right. He got robbed with victories in so many different ways and so many different races. First the Daytona 500, then Coda, Circuit of Americas, where he pit it much later than William Byron, then at Texas, Texas Motor Speedway, which is not the best track in the NASCAR schedule. In fact, it's the worst in the current NASCAR schedule, in my opinion. But, come at Kansas, the second race of Kansas, and he finally takes that win. And what a sight, sight to behold, because this is a race that I would definitely watch again. And if you're a Ross Chastain fan, I highly recommend you to watch it. Yeah, he had a truck race. I mean, it was a 9 out of 10. The truck race was a 9 out of 10. Yeah, his Darlington win was a 9 out of 10, but... The Kansas win is a 10 out of 10 because, while it did have some flaws, nothing could ever take away what made it such a near-perfect race. So yeah, 
a near perfect way to win for 20 years and coming. Oh, and by the way, because Ross Chastain won, I actually made a deal to pre-order that race win die cast because he won. And it's going right on the bottom of Dale Jr.'s car. Because it is going to be a monumentous occasion and it's going to be one of the last 124 scale die casts I'll ever purchase. I usually purchase 164 die casts, the small ones. But because it's a monumentous occasion, Ross Chastain definitely took the victory. And if Denny Hamlin wins the championship, well, a lot of people w don't want to see him win the championship. I might buy another 124 scale die cast of him. Or heck, a 164 die cast will do. But this is definitely a monumentous occasion because Ross Chastain finally got his win. And I couldn't be happier for it because I started upgrading my equipment in the Bandito's lair, aka the Bandito HQ. Got a flat screen TV and I got a Sony RDR VX555 DVD recorder coming in. Just don't tell that to the thieves, okay? Yeah, I'm not gonna post any personal information, but I got one of those DVD recorder combo units coming in, and there's gonna be a lot of stuff that's gonna change in the Bandito's lair, so yeah. I'm so glad Ross Chastain won, and it came at a time where I started upgrading my stuff. So to celebrate this monumentous occasion, here is a clip of Ross Chastain in the Spire Machine in NASCAR Heat 5 doing his Hail Melon. So let's go. Greetings NASCAR enjoyers and welcome to my playthrough of NASCAR Heat 5 with Ross Chastain. Yeah, keep in mind, this is supposed to be a bonus part of the video and I'm going to set the difficulty to casual since, well, the AI can be relentless on normal. Yeah, so the difficulty is all over the place. Couldn't imagine doing it on expert. Yeah, let me know in the comments if you want me to do a race on expert mode as a challenge run. But anyways, let's save and continue and go over to Martinsville. Yeah, this is what I like to call the you suck mode because it's obviously meant for guys who want to play the game and, well, guys who haven't played the game before and would want to learn the ins and outs of it, you know. First time players. Yeah, it does tell you that you can customize. Your cars in the game, and of course... Well, it does tell you that you can make custom liveries in the game itself. But it is rather limited though. Hopefully iRacing will have a better use of that feature. So yeah, because it... Yeah, because I'm playing on casual, it has auto braking. Yeah, let's forget about practice. We're gonna skip for practice and qualifying. I prefer to race with track. Yeah, Denny is on pole. Oh look. Chase Elliott has unapproved body modification in his car. It's kind of ironic that back in the All right, you're coming to the 2010s ready, that ready. Alan Gustafson flag, was fined for a suspension violation. Funny, isn't it? Car high, careful. 
and guess what team it is. It was the number nine team, driven by Chase Elliott. Yeah, one of the Hendrick cars got fined for a suspension violation. But anyways, let's get into the game. Oh, sorry there, Ryan Priest. Didn't mean to. Yeah, didn't mean to. Well, didn't want to try to wreck you out. Yeah, Daniel Suarez is doing a good job at getting himself out of the way of Ross Chastain because that guy would become his teammate in the future. Yeah, it's kind of ironic that a Toyota driver goes over to a Chevy team. That is the most ironic thing that I found out about Daniel Suarez. A Toyota team going over to well, a Toyota driver going over to a Chevy team. Where have I seen that before? Yeah, how good felt to be it. He went from being with a Toyota team to a racing to going over to Richard Chowers Racing to Chevy team. Yeah. Currently in seventh, and of course we're trying to move up the field. Oh look, we're battling William Byron, just like in that Kansas race. So yeah, the one thing I do not like about casual mode is the auto braking. I just wish that it would give you the option freely break at any time. I always prefer racing games that let you break, even on casual difficulty. That's why I like games like Forza and Grand But oh well, that's what we got. Custom settings for. Yeah, we're in first. Like I said, we're playing on the You Suck mode. And of course, we're beginning to lap for the whole field. Yeah, it's a pretty good race so far. Yeah, would it be Ross Chastain without the Hail Melon? Because... Well, he's known for that move, but it was banned by NASCAR, though. Yeah. He did an excellent pro gamer move, only for it to be banned by NASCAR. Yeah, it's lap 9 out of 10, yep, it's a 10 lap race, it's this pretty short. Here we go, final lap. And of course, let's do the Hail Melon. Yep, Daniel Suarez is letting us through. Here we go. It's Ross Chastain without the Hail Melon. Yeah, that's what I'm talking about, man. Here we are. We won. So yeah, that was a pretty good race. Yeah, let's do a burnout. If you like this video, well, I highly recommend you to watch another race that a future track house driver won. And you know the drill by now. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, hit that notification bell so you don't miss out on the latest race of Super Productions videos. Although, to people who already subscribed to my channel, all you have to do is like and comment. But anyways, this is Bandito signing off. And I will catch you guys next time, and peace out.